Hi, thanks for tuning in to watch my Player Pods how-to video. In this video, we're going to talk about the Steam Party plugin integration so that using the Beacon network, we can use the pods to represent the players. All right, so the first thing we need to do is go to the Marketplace page for W3 Studios, or I have the link below, download the example project for the engine version that you have. It's important that the Steam Party plugin be updated to 2.0 to make this super easy. Once you have the file unzipped, open it up, and then we want to open the project up one time before we do anything else and let it open and register the directory to the launcher so the launcher can install the player pods back. Otherwise, it won't know that the project exists. So when this opens, we don't do anything. We must close it down. All right, now we open up our launcher and go to our player pods pack and add it to the project. Show all projects, theme pod, and find the installation directory that you have and select 421 or the engine version that you have to use. All right, add project. And once that gets added, we can go ahead and open it back up. All right, now it's loaded up. And as you can see, we have the level, the player pods overview level loaded up now. Before it was just black screen and when we didn't have the pods loaded into the directory. So we'll go ahead and start the uh, integration process. We'll go ahead and go over to the player pods and we'll want to uh, look at the most important blueprints that we'll be dealing with. Uh, the BPS player pods is the uh, player state for the um, Steam Beacon. And then there's also the game mode Steam pods and then the player controller Steam pods. What we want to do is go ahead and take the world settings, go to world settings and change the current um, game mode over to the game mod Steam Pods. And that'll go ahead and set up all the correct classes uh, for the Steam Pods uh, player controller and also the uh, BPS player pods. So that's the uh, really the only thing we have to do to get this up and running. That's it. Save it. Uh, but before we uh, play, if we go ahead and play, we'll see uh, uh, some problems possibly. So we'll hit play. And one thing you notice is this browser thing is in the way, and I really don't want that like that. So I'll go ahead and I'll change that real quick. And what we'll want to do is go to the view options, turn on engine content, and then turn on plugin. Go to the Steam Party content, UMG, and go to the party panel. And then what we'll have here, new in the 2.0 version, is the ability to click on. Uh, the, the root party panel and then options we can actually turn these on and off the browser the chat window the party slots and also the add player so you can sit there and turn these on and off as much uh, for your own project or when you want to debug and not debug so for now I'm gonna have the browser not turned off because I'm not interested in that part yet um, and it's in the way and then I'll save that out and then now if I hit play you'll see that it has taken away the browser menu for me. All right, so I'm going to pack this, package this up and do a quick test. And that's pretty much all you have to do to get this uh, system running. All right, so now we have this game packaged and started up. I've also taken a copy of this and distributed to another PC and my son Galaxy will help us do a quick multiplayer test. So at this point, I'll go ahead and click on uh, the friends list and I will click on Galaxy to send an invite. And then you can also access the friends list from clicking these buttons and close them also. All right, Galaxy's joined the party. Uh, you can go ahead and click on your character and change your mesh. I changed mine to the default one. Galaxy's gonna go ahead and change his over. He went to the blue one. Uh, he can also play emote. And then also do an animation. And I also can do the same thing. I can do uh, animation or do an emote. Of course, you would sit there and have your own Emotes and animation plugged in for your own game, but that's the hooks to plug into. Uh, and then the other thing is we will go ahead and uh, do ready. So we'll hit ready to ready it up. And then once it's ready, uh, the play game will come active. Uh, and then we can go ahead and go into the game. At this point, I do want to change my mess to like uh, a, a cycle. So the messes, there's only a array of three of them. I'm going to cycle through them to the green one. And I want to make sure I start in the game. Uh, with the mesh that I selected from here. So this uh, 
example project shows you how to get some information over into your game and how to set that up. All right, so let's go ahead and play the game. And at this point, you see that I've loaded up and everything works great. All right, we're back to the lobby. And as you can see, our party has reconnected to our pods and we can still do everything we could before. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you is I did leave some external examples. So if I wanted to change my model with these buttons over here, I could do that too, instead of through the menu here. Um, and then you also have your other Steam Party controls that all work with the, the chat messaging. And then also your party buttons here still work and represent you when you talk with uh, voice chat. Go ahead and exit out. All right, I'm back in the editor and I wanted to go over just a couple more highlights about the integration process for those that want to know more how this is put together. Uh, going back to the uh, game pod Steam modes, we open that up. And uh, what we have here is our um, Steam Party controller component. And this is where we just tie into. We can literally click on it and we want to see any of the events we want to jump into. Like we want to know when a player joined the Steam Party, when a player left the Steam Party, we can hook, hook up to those uh, events. And then this is where we start uh, getting all the party members and we get all the pods. We come up, we um, actually have to create a player state. Uh, a default engine player state to match each of the beacon player states. And this is where it goes through and assigning a player state, a uh, converted player state to each of the pods. And then once that's done, it goes back to, to the pods and um, binds the delegates with the set player pod here is where we bind the delegates for the, uh, the player pods. So if we open that up, this is actually the uh, BPS player pods right here. Uh, this is where it actually binds the delegates. So if you want to know how to bind delegates to the player pods, here's a good place to look at to see how to do, do that. Here's where we sign on for the character index. We want and we get a character change. So we want to set the server mesh on this side. And then the same thing for the um, ready change. So we set the delegate for when the ready, ready has changed. And also when the player requests the ready change. And then the same thing for the FX. Um, on the FX, when we go over to the local set pod FX, it'll call that event and call the server, and then come over into the player pods and uh, distribute that FX to all the clients. Now, this is uh, most of them are rep notifies. Not notifies. The the problem with a rep notify in some cases is if you're setting the same bit twice, uh, if it, the the variable does not change, it will not replicate. So sometimes you want to play the same emote twice or the same animation twice. Uh, a rep notify does not work, so you have to do a multicast of RPC. Uh, the remote procedure call will actually force it to run even if the data is the same as it was before. So that's why we have a multicast um, pod FX. And then that's pretty much it. Uh, if you go over to player controller Steam Pods, really it's kind of like the, the old way of hooking to the player controller. We have this um, Steam Party controller, and this is where we it hook into all of our events that happen to the party whenever there's a player change, whenever there's a party message. We can see where that's going to go straight to the UI party panel and say a message received. So all these hooks are very simple to uh, to hook up to. All right, and that's the overview. I'll go ahead and close that out. And that's it. That's everything you need to do to get the, the Steam Party to play with the Steam Pods content pack. So if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and I'll answer them as best I can. Thanks, thanks again for watching. Bye.